did it take you uh, to go back from training from MMA back to getting used to training for boxing? I always just do both. So I, I focus more on MMA when it's time to focus on MMA. But boxing is it, boxing is a part of MMA. So I'm always still working on my punches, um, on my power, on my combinations. I still always work on that. So I never really lose it. It just when I get back to boxing, it just now you're looking at the hands and you don't have to worry about the feet and the knees and stuff. <laughs> well, so I think we learn more about ourselves through defeat sometimes with victory. So for you, knowing the competitor that you been since a little girl, you know, just what did you learn about yourself after suffering your first, even though it wasn't boxing or MMA, what did you learn about yourself and how can that help you moving forward just mentally, you know, staying locked in? Um, I just learned that, you know, even though it was a split decision loss, it's still like I learned that focus is key, you know what I mean? To keep that focus, keep that keep that center energy of keep your routine no matter what, you know. Um, I've always been super, super strict on that, but being at the top for so long, you can probably lose your way here or there, but I just know that at the fight, I had endured uh, a lot leading up to that fight that, that I didn't speak about publicly because um, you just got to do what you got to do. That's how it is when you when you born and raised in Flint, you know. It's like, I, I got to do what I got to do. So, yeah, I got, I was sparring and I got head-butted three weeks before the actual MMA fight. I had a big old cut here. I had eight stitches and I couldn't even train for a whole week and I had a mild concussion. But still, here I was at the fight. I didn't get um, submitted. I didn't get um, hurt during, during the fight. I felt like I won the fight. But just to know that I put in all that training and I went through things that I went through in camp and I still was able to go out there and perform the way that I did. So it just taught me that um, preparation does win fights, you know, and I was prepared. I just had a little small setback. And uh, now I know for my next fight just to make sure I just be more, just be more careful in camp, but just keep that, just keep that focus, which I did. Cause I, I may wait for the fight. I didn't make an excuse to not show up to the fight and I had plenty of them, but I just still went out there and fought and I won. No, um, you, you signed a, an extremely lucrative deal over Sky Sports and I yeah. guess wanted to speak with you on how exciting that is and just the journey to get to that. Um, that. Well, it's been a long journey, you know, for a woman to get a seven figure deal in women's boxing. But that goes to uh, give a thank you to my promoter, Dimitri, you know, and a, and a thank you to Mark Taffy. Those guys work behind the scenes while I work in the gym. <laughs> you know, that's it. Like, they're doing their things with the emails and the phone calls, and, and they just call and tell me good news. And so um, I've always known my worth. Dimitri has known my worth for a long time. And we know that the checks is going to keep getting bigger and bigger. We don't go down. You know, we could have taken some offers to go down to be inside the ring quicker and things of that nature. But um, it's a sport, but it's a business. And I'm a business woman. So they know, like, I'm not going to fight for 350 k and then my next fight fight for 40000 Like, and, and then I wanted to get you yeah. in your opinion with all your knowledge of, you know, helping grow in the, the, the women's sports. And I was talking to Dimitri about how you led the way. Uh, one of your friends, you know, Amanda Serrano, is going to face Katie Taylor. Do you feel like how she's being moved with the Jake Paul undercard, has that been uh, helpful in the women's fights with, and how they've kind of done it on your expertise? You know, it's, it's been helpful in that way because I fought main events throughout my whole time when I was fighting on Showtime. I never got the chance to fight a pay-per-view, but I think I would have done extremely well. But I think that with her fighting under Jake Paul, it is bringing notoriety to her. You know, but should but but should it have to be that way? No, she's a seven-time division world champion. She should be recognized for Amanda Serrano, not oh Jake Paul is is promoting or putting putting Amanda Serrano on. You know what I'm saying? But hey, I re, I respect him. You know, putting her on and um, her finally getting the recognition that she deserved. I'm actually happy for her. You know, besides me and the you know me and the beef that I had with him, but. <laughs> Overall, it's still like I'm a I'm a Amanda Serrano fan. I go to her fights. I cheer for her. She come to my fight. She cheer for me. Um, and I'm just happy that she's finally getting this fight with Katie Taylor because it will prove who is who is the best out of that division. And I think that um, Amanda Serrano has a great chance to dethrone Katie Taylor. I think she has the power, has the skill, has the speed. 
she's got to keep working, you know, and I, and I think that that fight would be huge. And she wouldn't have got that fight without without the help of Jake Paul. So he is a part of her team. He's helping her, and I'm, I'm and, and I'm happy to see that. But I'm, I'm hoping that with Jake Paul doing that with Amanda Serrano, I hope that a lot of the guys in boxing see that they can do the same thing with, with, with you know, women fighters. Not just me, but other women fighters. Like, they can put them on like that, you know, but they just got to do it.